friends, Miss Cassie here with Soul and Public Library's Digital Storytime. This month we're talking all about the season of winter, and this week we're going to talk about some fun outdoor winter activities. But first, we need to sing our welcome song, and we need to get our clapping hands ready. So we're going to wiggle our fingers, and shake our hands, and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast, and put them on our knees. Okay, here we go. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. What do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. All right, for our last verse, we're gonna be as quiet as we can. And we're gonna whisper, hooray. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. Our theme song this month is the Mitten Song. So get your fingers ready to put into those warm mittens. Thumb in the thumb, place fingers all together. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. When it is cold, it doesn't matter whether mittens are wool or made of finest leather. This is the song we sing in mitten weather. Thumb in the thumb, place fingers all together. <laughs> Yay! Our first book today is called In the Snow, and it's written by Hui Van Lee. And this book, we are going to learn some, some symbols, some Chinese characters is what they're called, which is how you write words in Mandarin Chinese. And so we're going to be learning <laughs> these together. It is a wonderful day for a walk in the forest. It is winter. The first snow has fallen and the ground is a canvas of white. Today, Xiao Ming's mother is helping him learn new Chinese characters. Writing Chinese is fun for Xiao Ming because he thinks it is just like drawing pictures. So remember, Chinese characters are words. With a stick from a fallen branch, Xiao Ming's mother draws in the snow. Have you ever done that? You take a stick or something long and pointy and you make shapes or draw pictures in the snow or letters, maybe you write your name. Yeah, that's what they're doing together too. This is the character for tree, she says. It looks just like a tree. I can see its trunk, branches, and roots, exclaims Zhao Ming. That's right, answers his mother. The symbol for tree also means wood. And so look, you can see here in the picture right next to the words, that's the symbol, right? It has the long down stroke and then some strokes across. And so it does, it looks like the trunk of a tree with the branches coming out. What character does it make when we put two trees together? What do you think? 
If you have one tree and then another tree, what do you think that could stand for? Forest, because many trees together make a forest. Now, if I add three strokes next to the character for forest, so you can see there, right? So there's the two little characters for trees and two trees together makes a forest. And then there are three, it almost looks like dots next to it. So let's see, what do we think that new word is? Can you guess what word it makes, his mother asks? Let's see. Three strokes always means water. Water in the forest. Pond, right? Answers Xiao Ming. That's right, Xiao Ming. What a smart little boy he is. What a good learner. Mm. I know another word that uses the character for tree, says Zhao Ming as he draws in the snow. When I draw a hooked line next to the tree, it means rest. See, I imagine a person leaning against a tree. It's a good way to remember that character, right? And then look, there he is leaning and resting against the tree. You have a great imagination, Zhao Ming, says his mother. Will it help you to remember the character for rain? That's a hard one, he says. Watch carefully. His mother draws in the snow as she explains. Not all characters look exactly like pictures, but if you use your imagination again, you will see drops of water falling from the cloud in this character. So look, can you see the character there? It's next to the words. It has, it's sort of like a T shape in the middle and then a hook around and a line and then two dots inside. I could see how that looks like a cloud with rain falling down. Can you? Yeah. Xiaoming tosses a snowball to his mother. How do I write snow? He asks. Add the symbol for hand at the bottom of rain, and that makes snow. Rain and snow are both forms of water, but we can hold snow in our hands. Oh, that's a great way to remember that symbol. And I like that way of thinking about snow, don't you? that snow is rain you can hold in your hand. Let's see what other characters we can combine to make new ones. Xiao Ming's mother walks to a fresh patch of snow. Many words start with the character for sun. I know that character. It is a square with a line in the middle. I always imagine it's the sun winking at me, <laughs> says Xiao Ming. The character for sun also means day. Can you wink like the sun at Xiao Ming? Close just one eye. Okay, try the other one. <laughs> it's a little tricky, isn't it? Okay, so draw three suns together. Can you show me your threes? One, two, three. Draw three suns together, and that word is sparkling. Think of the sun reflecting off of a pond. The reflections look like little crystals sparkling on top of the water. I like that. Or you could even think of the sun reflecting off the water, right? And then it looks like there's more than one sun. Moon looks very much like sun, but the character has longer side strokes. His mother continues, it looks like a ladder reaching up to the moon, says Zhao Ming as he draws the character for moon with his finger. Should we draw it together? I don't know if I'm going to do the strokes in the right order, but I'm going to do what it looks like in the picture. <laughs> we can do it together. So we'll go over and down and then up and then down, and then two little lines. 
and a ladder going up to the moon. That reminds me of the Eric Carle book, Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me. Do you know that one? We've read that one together before. That's a great one. Then Zhao Ming's mother draws a sun next to the, his moon. Bright, she says, just like you, the character for your name. Zhao Ming smiles. The sun is setting and it is time to go home. He cannot wait for tomorrow to draw more pictures in the snow. And then at the end of the book, it shows us the pictures that inspire the characters, the word in English, and then how to pronounce it in Chinese. So for example, we have, right, the snow coming down into the hand because snow is water you can hold. And then there's the character, the character for rain plus the character for hand. It means snow, and then it's pronounced shre, as in shred. That's pretty cool. We're learning a new language together. And then look, there are more words that do that same thing. That is pretty cool. So what were some of the activities that Xiao Ming and his mom did together? So they drew in the snow, but what else? He also threw something. Do you remember what he threw? That's right, he threw a snowball at his mom. <laughs> we also saw some snowmen in the background. And just taking a walk outside in the winter is a great winter activity. The cold air, the good exercise. You get more tired walking in the snow because you sink into it. So it takes more energy than just walking on the regular ground. Those are all great winter activities. All right, friends, so we learned some new words in Mandarin in our book, In the Snow. And now we're gonna learn some words in American Sign Language for under the dark. Are you ready? So the first sign we need to know is under. So we're gonna make one of our hands is gonna be like the ground. And then our other hand just starts above and then it goes below. So under, let's do it together, ready? Under, good job. And then dark, or excuse, yeah, under the dark. So dark, we're gonna take our hands like this and we're gonna put them in front like this, like we're making things darker. So ready? Under the dark, there are stars. And we're gonna point to the stars in the sky. And then under the stars, there is a tree. And this is the sign for tree. Our whole arm is the ground and our other arm is the tree. Can you see how your fingers are the branches of the tree? Yeah, just like that. Then under, the tree, there is a blanket, and we're gonna pull the blanket up. <laughs> there is a blanket. And then under the blanket is me. And we're gonna point to ourselves. Did you get all that? Okay, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> under the dark, there are stars. <gasps> under the stars, there is a tree. Under the tree, there is a blanket. Under the blanket is me. Yay! Okay, so if we're getting ready to go outside, we need to make sure that we are dressed nice and warm so we don't get too cold. And so to do that, we are gonna sing the winter pokey. So we're gonna start, we're gonna put our mittens in, right? Those are our hands. <laughs> then we're gonna put our boots in, that's our feet. Put the boots in. We're gonna put our hat in the middle, right on top of our head. <laughs> we're gonna put our long scarf in. And then we're gonna put our snowsuit in. That's gonna be our whole body because our snowsuit covers our whole body. So we'll put our snowsuit in and our snowsuit out. All right, but first we're gonna start with our mittens. You put your mittens in, you put your mittens out, you put your mittens in and you shake them all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. 
You put your boots in, you put your boots out, you put your boots in and you shake them all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your long scarf in, you put your long scarf out, you put your long scarf in and you shake it all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> you put your snowsuit in, you put your snowsuit out, you put your snowsuit in and you shake it all about. You do the winter pokey and you turn yourself around. That's that's what it's all about. Yay! Our last book today is called Red Sled by Leah Judge. And look what's on the cover of this book. We have a friend who is all dressed up. They have their snowsuit on. They have their black boots on. They have their red hat on. And probably mittens hiding behind their back. They are ready to play outside. So look, here we have our friend walking back to their house in the snow. Scrinch, 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 scrinch. That's the sound of them stepping on the snow as they walk back home. And look, they have something under their arm, something red. Oh, look, we turn the next page and we can see it was a red sled and it's leaning against the house and you can see the little footprints from our friend walking home <gasps> home says the brown bear hmm. <gasps> and the brown bear picks up the red sled and goes scrinch 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 scrunch scrinch and walks away from the house. And look, you can see the bear's big paw prints next to the friend's little footprints. Oh, and then look, now there's a rabbit and what are they doing? They are riding the sled down the hill. And then the moose sees what fun they're having. Oh, look, the bunny is balancing on the bear's toes. Alley-oop. And now the moose is in on the fun and the bear is on the moose's antlers. And the bunny is hiding between the moose's front legs and they're sledding down the big hill. Gadong, gadong, gadong. And some other friends have noticed, what new animals do we see in the tree? Yeah, a possum and two little raccoons. So of course they want to turn on the sled and so now all of them are on there. The bear is balancing. Whoa. And a porcupine friend. Whoa. And a little mouse on top of the porcupine. Whoa! <laughs> Yee! <laughs> They're airborne for a little bit there. Yikes. <gasps> what happened? That's right. They crashed their sled and everyone fell out onto the snow. How do you think they're feeling right now? Look at those animals' faces. What expression do you see? How do you think they're feeling? Yeah, do you see those smiles? They are happy. They are excited. They are having a fun time. But it's time. And the bear picks up the red sled, puts it under his arm, and walks back to the house. Scrinch, scrunch, scrinch, scrunch, scrinch, scrunch, scrinch, scrunch. And the rabbit comes with him. And the next morning, the friend comes out of his house. He picks up his red sled and he looks down on the ground. What does he see on the ground? 
he sees those paw prints from the bear. And he thinks, hmm. And so he puts the sled back and he peeks out the window. Do you think the animals are gonna come back? Oh, look at the very last page. What's happening on the very last page? That's right, they're all sledding together. We have the bear and the rabbit and the moose and the little boy and the porcupine and the mouse. I don't see the raccoons or the possum, but maybe they're on the other side of the bear. What do you think? But that sure looks like a fun winter activity. <laughs> All right, friends, this is the end of our story time. Don't forget to have a grown up help you write down our secret code for this week, which of course is sled. S L E D. Sled. And since this is our last December story time, we have done four story times this month. And if you watch them and write down the code for each of those four story times, that is one level in the, our winter library challenge. And you can come in and claim your small prize and enter for a chance to win one of the grand prizes. But now it's time for our goodbye song. We read a book and we played a game and we sang a song together. We read a book and we played a game. We had a fun adventure. Now go read a book and go play a game and sing. Bye.